Um, so 2022 has been, uh, I think, a complicated year, right? I think uh, a lot of people are remembering the year for all of the uh, terrible stuff that's uh, happened and uh, within the crypto space for all, all of the uh, multi-billion dollar blowups. But I think it's uh, also important to remember all of the various positives that the uh, crypto space has seen, right? Um, so the merge, I think, is uh, the most recent one, but the big one, right? This is something that uh, the Ethereum has been uh, waiting for pretty much since its inception, right? And it's been uh, delayed and complexified and turned out to be more complex than we thought. And uh, lots of things have happened. But you know, now, finally, um, as of uh, September 15th, I think it was uh, 0645 uh, UTC, um, you know, we uh, actually have a proof of stake chain, right? And, uh, you know, doesn't it just like feel good to be able to say like, no, no, not Ethereum is going to reduce its energy consumption by 99.9%, .9%, but Ethereum has reduced its energy consumption by 99.9%, .9%, right? Like uh, we're literally talking about going from a level of electricity consumption similar to the entire country of Austria to a level of uh, electricity consumption similar to the entire country of, uh, I don't know, maybe San Marino, maybe Vatican. Vitalik Buterin is the creator and head founder of the second largest cryptocurrency, Ethereum. However, even before creating Ethereum, Vitalik was a huge Bitcoin bull and around the crypto space essentially since its inception. In doing so, Buterin has been a part of and witnessed every single boom and bust cycle in crypto and has one of the most measured and experienced outlooks on the entire space. In his most recent interview with Bankless, Buterin gives a message of optimism that this current bear market cycle is just like the previous bear cycles we have seen play out in crypto in the past and why he has never had more confidence in Ethereum and its performance in the next bull cycle. However, Buterin also gives his message of optimism with a warning to investors speaking on how if huge liquidations such as FTX continue to play out, it's going to halt crypto adoption and stop it from ever going from 10% of global adoption to the 70% it has the potential for. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video where Buterin also outlines the three biggest opportunities for crypto in 2023. Also, only a small percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed. If you enjoy finance content, consider subscribing or liking the video. It's free and you can always change your mind. Uh, as someone who's been through multiple market cycles, like every single market cycle has the bad year, right? The down year, right? 2018 was, was my first one. There was one prior to that. Is 2022 unusual in any respects, or is this kind of par for the course of like, yeah, this is this is what happens at the the the, la the latter half of a bull market. We have a lot lot of bad stuff, but meanwhile there is relentless adoption regardless, uh, no matter what year it is. Uh, is 2022 unusual for you uh, in in contrast to other uh, years of crypto? I'm trying to compare 2022 against the yeah uh, kind of early to mid bear market periods of the previous cycles, right? Um, actually, yeah, if you want to show people visuals, one great visual to show right now is uh, the Bitcoin price from uh, 2011 to now. Bitcoin just because Ethereum unfortunately didn't exist in 2011. Um, but if you look at that, right, you know, you see you know, the great cycles, right? And, uh, you know, you have 2011 um, and then the really big one at the end of 2013, and then the even bigger one in 2017, and then the, yeah, and a super big one in uh, 2021, right? And see, the, the the very first one at the left, it's like so low that we don't even notice it, right? Um, like, like if you just click, if you just click the log button, wow. And so the 2015, right? So if you go down that flat part after the first uh, peak, that's when Ethereum launched, right? So, then 2018, uh, that's uh, the uh, flat and the kind of cup and handle after the second uh, bull market. That's when Uniswap was uh, created and started existing for the first time. Now let's look at the flat and like slightly decreasing line after the third bubble. Um, that's when the merge happened and we had multiple ZK EVMs and we're starting to see serious layer two adoption. Uh, so the uh, post uh, peak periods are always uh, periods in, in which there actually are some pretty significant uh, technological uh, progress uh, that is uh, happening they are periods uh, where i mean often it's easier for people to get back to work because the yeah, numbers aren't giving them dopamine hits every six hours anymore and um, they're mm -hmm. 
periods where a lot of uh, real work uh, gets done and even periods where the good gets separated from the bad, right? Uh, so one of the other reasons uh, I wanted to make that analogy is that if you go back to 2014, right? The, uh, the FTX of 2014, kind of, uh, Mount Gox. I actually kind of don't want to even call Mount Gox the FTX of 2014 because I just feel like the way, like, Mark Rappellis did a whole, did a bunch of horrible stuff, but I actually feel like the way that he has handled himself post blow up has actually been kind of honorable. Like, you know, he hasn't tried to give himself a Yasuju yeah, style uh, redemption arc or, um, you know, in, like kind of give himself a attention on Twitter. He just kind of, you know, went quiet for a while, just diligently worked on helping people get their money back and, uh, you know, working on, uh, on, on Gox and other, and, and other things, right? Like that's, uh, it's like our villains are getting lower quality now, right? It's, uh, you know, <laughs> like Mark, I think, you know, he is actually, yeah, like improved in ways that like, I just, Unfortunately, um, you know, don't expect uh, people like uh, Sue, like Sue and Kyle to improve even a decade from now. Um, but you know, very much hope I'm wrong, though. I yeah, think I'm you know, I, I, I'm always happy when uh, people positively outperform my expectations, uh, right? But the Mount Gox uh, blow up in 2014, it did feel like an existential crisis for the crypto space. It felt like a huge crisis for Bitcoin. It felt like a huge crisis for legitimacy. It was an invitation for regulators to swarm around the space. And it uh, mm, no, did have a lot of bad consequences in all kinds of places, and it made a huge number of people very unhappy. Uh, 2022, uh, you know, a lot of uh, very similar things are happening, except you know now we have, a, I think, a much more interconnected uh, crypto space, and we have a lot more sophistication, and so you know, on the other hand, a lot more fragility and uh, contagion happening, right? Though I think it's, it's important to remember that like in 2014 there was fragility and contagion too, right? Because Mt. Gox, when it collapsed, it was both the thing causing the crypto price to, prices to crash and also the uh, thing that people were used to as being the place where prices moved up and down. And so the market had to like, basically crash and change where it uh, where its numbers were coming from at the same time, right? And here, you know, this year we had the double whammy of, uh, you know, obviously first uh, Luna uh, com coming back down to Earth and uh, Terra going back to down to somewhere much, much lower than Earth. Um, and, um, you know, six months later, obviously, yeah, FTX blowing up and then a month after that, I think um, BlockFi is like in, in bankruptcy or something like that now, right? Uh, so mm -hmm. it's... Uh, Definitely echoes of a uh, similar situation, but at the same time, like I don't want to all be rosy about it because I think uh, the other thing that's important to remember now that I think will make 2022 harder to recover from than 2014 is that I think a community having like this very high variance and like both high excitement and high turnoff approach to uh, existing is uh, something that's a very good strategy when you're trying to increase adoption from 0.1% to 10%, but it's a terrible strategy when you're trying to increase adoption from 10% to 70%, right? I think this is a, a criticism I would have made of uh, Bitcoin maximalism uh, uh, sometime uh, uh, ago too, right? That uh, if you're just a small community, then if you say uh, you know, incredibly over the top things about how the uh, US government is the primary source of all evil in the world and money printing is the reason why uh, you know we have some kind of military status uh, dystopia instead of uh, you know, Switzerland-like happy land for everyone, um, then it's... Uh, you know, you're going to turn off a lot of people who clearly kind of see through those um, attitudes and realize that there's a lot more complicated stuff going on in the world. But at the same time, there is going to be some portion of the population that like really believes in the thing you believe or is really receptive to the thing you believe. And they're attracted to the passion with which you say it. And so they're going to, you know, wants to uh, come along with you. And, uh, you know, being in this kind of siege mentality uh, where they are one of the few brave soldiers up pushing forward the future, even if, um, you know, huge uh, portions of the mainstream world and the Paul Krugmans and uh, uh, the Elizabeth Warrens and all of those characters are, um, you know, rabidly against them. Like, there is a group of people to whom that, like, being in that position of the siege narrative really appeals to them, right? But that's 
how you get from 0.1% to 10%. And crypto is no longer in the stage of getting from 0.1% to 10%. Um, I think uh, there have been adoption charts and like estimates that people have attempted to make. And in some countries, ownership of cryptocurrency is like literally at the 10% of the population level. So now it, like the space is at the level of trying to get from 10% to 70%. And that requires different strategies. And strategy is where, you know, this really crazy stuff that keeps losing people five billion dollars keeps happening are like the exact opposite of uh, what the space wants and needs to do right so i uh, yeah you know I, I wanted to give the message of optimism but also give this kind of important message that there is uh, a lot of work that needs to be done and uh, you know the status quo even if it's a status quo that's like kind of secretly exciting and fun for a lot of us like that's uh, you know not the sort of thing that we want crypto to continue to be four years from now if we yeah, actually wanted to succeed. Intentionally said, what in the Ethereum application ecosystem excites me instead of what in the crypto space excites me. This is uh, an experiment I've been uh, trying, right? Basically, yeah, like using the word crypto less and uh, using the word Ethereum more. Uh, and this is like a subtle thing. I mean, it's still an early stage experiment, so I'm not entirely... Yeah, you know, sure what all like what all of the consequences of like, emphasizing Ethereum in particular much more would be, but like the theory here, like it, it so first of all, it's not maximalist, right? So it's not saying like, you know, focus on Ethereum to the exclusion of everything else. It's more saying we are not going to implicitly ally with you just because you are a cryptocurrency by default, right? The yeah, problem with the crypto space is that the crypto space is an ungovernable commons that has a no barrier to entry, right? So if you remember, you know, the basics of, uh, you know, Eleanor Ostrom's theory of the commons and what commons is create tragedies of the commons and what commons is can be governed. One of the basic ingredients for a commons to be governed is gatekeeping, right? Like you have to actually be able to, um, you know, say, you know, this is us and this is not us and uh, actually be able like have some level of enforcement or filtering in the thing that is us. With, with the crypto space, like the only qualification to be able to call yourself part of the crypto space and not have people complain is to just like somehow use cryptography and to have some kind of chains data structure somewhere. Like those are literally the qualifications. Like. You don't even need decentralization, right? Like, I forget. Has IOTA even gotten rid of their coordinator yet? I forget now. No, right? the answer is no. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but like, XRP, right? Like, you know, they're like still completely centralized. And, uh, but, uh, you know, at the same time, they are, you know, on coin market cap and, uh, you know, still, I think, uh, haven't apologized for writing documents into the, yeah, uh, to the U.S. government, uh, basically saying that they should be favored over Bitcoin and Ethereum because Bitcoin and Ethereum are China controlled. And I think there's a huge amount of opportunity, right? Like if you can make a wallet that a billion people use, that's a huge opportunity. If uh, you can make a stable coin that can actually survive, um, you know, anything up to and including a U.S. dollar hyperinflation and, um, you know, Doge forbid the U.S. dollar hyperinflation actually ends up happening, then, you know, that's uh, a huge um, op op opportunity as well. If you can, uh, you know, create something that can actually, you know, be a lifeline for everyone going through that situation. Um, if you can get sign in with Ethereum to work and you can like unseat Facebook and, uh, you know, Google and Twitter as the kind of login overlords of the Internet that itself is a huge opportunity, right? And um, there's, there are still huge things that are left on, uh, um, on claims that still can be built, but they're harder to build, right? Like you can't just build, um, you know, obfuscated casinos and get people to throw $13 million in and just uh, have a fairly quick path to victory. Um, so that's the, the place where I think the space is in now. And I think the people that are going to be more successful are the people that are actually willing to put that kind of hard work in.